Hello everyone, my name is Astha. I welcome you all to our classes for International English Olympiad for class 10th. Today is our fifth class in the series wherein we will be doing the topic of one word substitution. We will be understanding what uh, one word substitution is really about, also doing its various categories with examples. So let's just jump right into it. All right, so what one word substitution signifies is, what do we mean by it? We are going to have words that replace a group of words or a full sentence effectively without creating any kind of ambiguity in the meaning of sentences. Which means one word substitution is what? We will either have a, a group of words or a sentence which will be replaced by another word in such a way that there will not be any kind of ambiguity in the meaning of sentences. Ambiguity means will, it means there will not be any kind of uh, any kind of confusion in the meaning of sentences. That means both of these with whether it is the group of words or the full sentence or this word they will have both of them will have the same meaning. This will be some sort of a substitution, okay? Substitution is what? Where you replace one thing with another and there is uh, no confusion created, no ambiguity created and both of them, they mean the same thing. So that is what is going to happen in one word substitution. All right. So that's what one word substitution is. Now let's move on. So here we have a few examples for one word substitution like um, what did we read about them? Uh, we know that there are a group of words or a sentence which is then replaced by one word and there is no kind of ambiguity created which means the meaning is the same. Like here we, when we say one who does not express himself freely that person can be called an introvert. Okay. So here a group of words or sentence is being replaced by the word introvert. Like here, someone who behaves without moral principles. That person could be called immoral. Then a person who is incapable of being tampered with. And person, you know, we shouldn't be tampering with. That's in, impregnable. Then one who is unable to pay his debts. A person, you know, um, who has lost all his money and he's taken so much debt that person and now is unable to pay it that person could be called an insolvent a person who is mentally ill could be called a lunatic and a person who dislikes humankind and avoids human society a person who in general who just dislikes humankind that's that person could be called a misanthrope all right so that's uh, how we're going to do one word substitution you have a you have a sentence or a group of words which can be replaced by another word which can be rather substituted by another word which means it does not create any ambiguity or confusion in its meaning all right this is one set of examples let's move on Okay, here we have like a place where bees are kept, a collection of beehives, apiary, then a building containing tanks of live fish of different species, aquarium, a place, a scene of activity, debate, or conflict could be called an arena. All right, this is again, you know, see apiary, aquarium, these are, these all are nouns that we are substituting these group of words or sentences with. All right. So that's the job of one word substitution. We replace a group of words, a sentence with another word and there is no ambiguity or confusion created. Which means this group of words and this word, all of them, both of them have the same meaning. All right. All right, here we have a large group of people. Now, a large group of people could be called a horde. Then we have a study. The scientific study of physiology, structure, 
genetics ecology distribution classification economic importance of plants that study could be called botany then we have a person who draws or produces maps that person could be called a cartographer then a person who writes beautiful writing that's calligrapher and uh, a, the actually the art of writing uh, the art of writing beautifully could be called calligraphy similarly the study of maps could be called cartography then we have a person who composes the sequence of steps and moves for the performance of a dance that is a choreographer and similarly um, this art of composing the sequence of steps moves for dance performances could be called choreography see now choreography is choreographer is a noun which is referring to a person choreography could be you know an art form or it could be called uh, basically a study of dance moves that way okay so these are again a few examples of one word substitution now is time to take our quiz let's start all right so for the quiz what we will be doing is now every question you will be given 1 minute 1 minute means 60 seconds why am i giving you 1 minute because you see your question paper of ieo it has about uh, 50 questions and so you can uh, imagine that you know you get more or less a minute to answer the questions now this 1 minute is the maximum that you should be taking for answering the question now suppose there could be two three two three categories of students first category is suppose you answer the question within that 1 minute so i would request you to fast forward the video and uh skip right to the answer you should not be wasting your time all right now the other students who are not able to answer the question in 1 minute what you do you don't skip to the answer you pause the video and you write down your answer all right it is very important to answer each and every question because there is no negative marking here you see for every incorrect answer no points because there is no negative marking in ieo so it is important that you attempt all the questions now for a question of which you are not sure about the answer now even here and even in the exam if you are not sure about the answer and you may be think that b option is might be correct or c option might be correct so you should uh, in that case play your luck and play your mind and make a guess and still give an answer because it is a win win situation either you will get the marks for that question or you will get a zero right but if you don't attempt that question at all then you are anyway getting a zero in that right so it is good to attempt those questions and uh, even if you don't know all the answers try to understand and take a guess okay so this is for every correct answer 10 points this is just for your uh, for your own little game where you can try uh, to maintain a notepad so here you write the name of the chapter and then the question and then if it is correct you can give yourself 10 points if it is not correct you mark it here so it is important to mark to see these questions the ones which you mark incorrect it is important to go back to them later and then see where you did the mistake all right this is just for your reference for every correct answer you can give yourself 10 points all right now let's uh, start
All right, now we start off um, here with the questions on one word substitution. This says choose the most appropriate one word substitution for the given description. You're given a description, a group of words or like a sentence which has to be replaced with one of these words. Right, let's see. A school for training in special art. Options are academy, university, tuition or none of these. Now a school for training in special art is called an academy. An academy like we have a cricket academy or a dancing academy for these various arts which is specialized study hoti hai for that particular art only. All right. Now university tuition this is all about uh, this is about academics. University also is basically for higher studies and then tuition is for extra studies. Pretty sure you know what they mean. All right, next up we have one who is habitually kind to others. Okay, the options are sophisticated, uh, habitual, uh, sorry, sophisticated, altruist, habitual and monarch. Now one who is habitually uh, kind to others could be called uh, an altruist. An altruist is a person who is, you know, uh, concerned, uh, very much concerned about others' well-being and... Uh, their conditions that's an altruist other options like a sophisticated sophisticated is a person who is really when well mannered has you know very very cultured and uh, and uh, talks to people very respectfully okay then we have habitual habitual is something which uh, you do out of habit okay then monarch monarch is actually a person sort of a uh, sort of a ruler you know, the head of a state, like a king or a queen. Okay, that's a monarch. All right, here we have a collection of poems. Here the collection of poems, the options are epic, anthology, soliloquy uh, or calligraphy. 
now collection of poems is called an anthology all right the other options epic is like a, a tale a fable soliloquy is sort of a monologue sort of thing which the characters which usually these uh, drama these actors they do uh, for practicing you know speaking the thoughts uh, aloud uh, then we have calligraphy calligraphy is the art of beautiful writing Okay, next up we have land on the edge of the sea, city, island, coast or Iceland. Okay, now land on the edge of the sea, that's a coast. Okay. Other city, city we know it's uh, the lands around by land on all 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 areas. Then we have island. Island is a piece of land which is surrounded by water on all the sides. Okay. And then we have Iceland. Iceland is uh, we can say. Um, which is um, the name of a country, Iceland. And Iceland is actually an island. Iceland is the name of a country, and which is actually an island, which means that country is surrounded by water on all the sides. Okay. Okay, here we have uh, one who is very particular in one's taste and choice. Veteran, stoic, ascetic or fastidious. So that is fastidious. It's a person who is uh, very concerned about all these details and their taste and choice. Okay, then here we have ascetic. Ascetic can be referred to a person who is, uh, you know, who is uh, very self-disciplined and uh, maybe we can say has a certain routine like uh, usually uh, used for people who are very religious they have this these particular times of you know prayer and uh, bathing and other sorts of things so ascetic and we have veteran a veteran is someone is actually a post in the armed forces but it's 
can also be used for someone who has a lot of experience in a certain area that's a veteran in that area and we have stoic stoic is used for uh, a person it's used as a noun as a person who who doesn't really complain about their problems who has a lot of problems but they don't complain about it so stoic okay All right, here we have one who depends on and believes in faith. Faith. Anarchist, meticulous, fatalist, or iconoclast. Okay, so the person who believes a lot in uh, faith and just uh, believes that, you know, everything is inevitable. Like, um, you know, there, you remember that uh, movie? There was this movie, Zindagi Namile Ki Dibara, and there's this uh, pretty popular scene of Hrithik Roshan wherein he continuously keeps on saying that you know sab likha hua hai ye sab likha hua hai whatever it is everything is written so that's a person who depends on believes in fate and that is a fatalist okay um, now i am pretty sure you won't uh, you won't forget this word since i have linked it to the movie however the other words here yeah, anarchist anarchist uh, a person who supports anarchy in the sense anarchy is uh, actually something is is a belief which doesn't uh, which uh, which advocates for you know absolute freedom of the individual and talks about absence of government that's that's a person so anarchist would be a person who believes in certain ideology all right then we have meticulous meticulous is a person who is careful about all the details okay then we have iconoclast now iconoclast uh, could be referred to a person who is a very strong criticizer very strong uh, critic of uh, you know of all the uh, of institutions of beliefs it's just uh, you can use it as a person who has you know a very strong critic system all right so you i'm um, i'm pretty sure you're learning on a lot of new words not not just the final answer i could have easily given you the final answer that just you know one who depends on and believes in fate is a fatalist but uh, I'm trying uh, to give you all the meanings so that you know you can add on to your vocabulary, and you not only just learn one word in one question, but all the four words, what their meanings are. And if this question doesn't come, so this word doesn't come. Suppose if this word comes, this word comes, uh, you know something similar. So you are uh, able to guess. And even if these words don't come, these words are added on to your vocabulary, which is a very big thing in itself. Right. Well, let's move. Let's move on.
All right. Now here we have two countries whose frontiers touch. Okay. The options here are uh, Brittle Dynasty, Contiguous, or Ramphite. Okay. Two countries whose frontier touch. Neighbors. Right. The neighbors and also they are contiguous. Um, it's actually. I think it should be um, contiguous or con contiguous. I think. Uh, two countries whose frontiers touch contiguous. Mm, okay, like uh, India and Pakistan, their borders touch. They are contiguous. India and Nepal, our borders touch. Contiguous. India and China, our borders touch. So contiguous. Okay. Then we have brittle. Brittle is an adjective. Something uh, which uh, uh, brittle is usually used for bones. Bones are actually uh, hard, but they are breakable, right? So that's uh, brittle. Bones are brittle. Then we have dynasty. Now dynasty is basically hereditary, uh, hereditary rulers or the kings of some place. You know that dynasty. Then we have ramified. Now ramified uh, as a verb, ramify something is actually you know uh, creating certain branches, creating certain parts. All right, like sub parts. Right. Okay, here we have the study of coins. The options are lexicography, astronomy, numismatics, and anomaly. The study of coins as an area is referred to as numismatics. Okay, then others, uh, lexicography. Lexicography refers to this act of uh, editing and uh, compiling dictionaries. Okay, that's very interesting discipline. Then astronomy. Pretty sure you know what it means. Then we have anomaly. Anomaly, um, we call something an anomaly when it is, you know, sort of deviating from what is asked. Okay, which is not exact. Right, that's an anomaly.
Okay, here we have a government by a rich and powerful class, autocracy, theocracy, aristocracy, bureaucracy. A government by a rich and powerful class is aristocracy, where they have hereditary titles for the nobles, etc., the ministers, okay? Then we have autocracy and autocratic rule, theocracy is a theocratic rule, uh, bureaucracy is a bureaucratic rule, which is the government by an officials. And uh, um, yeah, theocrac theocracy, theocratic rule is, uh, you know, where the... Um, with the Theo's rule in the sense with the priests and these religious heads, all these people's rule, okay? All right, now we have the practice of taking someone else's works or ideas and passing them off as one's own. All right, I'm pretty sure you know what this means. The options are plagiarism, entomology, autobiography and manuscript. When you, when people who call it research, taking other people's work and passing, just copying the works, that's plagiarism, okay? When you just, suppose you're given, given an essay to write and you just copy, search on the internet, copy it from someone else, that's plagiarism. However, the right uh, uh, thing of research, what research actually is, you know, you, if you have to take up certain ideas, if you can't figure out what you write, you go onto the internet. If you want to uh, search, you search and you read a few articles and you uh, make, then make an original idea, make an original a uh, chronology or sequence of events on your own and then write that essay okay now this we have ent entomology entomology is uh, the study of insects autobiography is your own life story that you write on your own manuscript uh, pretty sure you must have read about it in history Okay, next up, pretty easy. A Trader Act prohibited by law. Sin, ethical, illicit and law-abiding. Trader Act prohibited by law, which means not allowed by law, would be illicit. Alright, prohibited. That's illicit. 
other sin is something immoral ethical something moral law abiding which is allowed by law okay Okay, next up we have here credible, sorry, uh, the options are, sorry, the description is something impossible to believe. The options are credible, incredible and incomparable. Something that is impossible to believe would be called incredible, incredible. You know, something that is, that you're such an awe, such an awe of and uh, it's something that you find ordinary. Sorry, sorry, extraordinary. Why am I making so many mistakes? So, incredible would be something that you're finding extraordinary, something that you are finding almost impossible to believe that's incredible. Credible would be its opposite. Incomparable, something that cannot be compared. Okay. All right, now here we have one who is too strong to be defeated. The options are dilettante, insolvent, invincible and termagant. Okay, here the correct answer, one who is too strong to be defeated, we people usually refer to it as God. Uh, you know, God is invincible. So, too strong to be defeated. Other words, dilettante, dilettante is a very specific word. It, uh, how do I describe it? It's referred for a person um, who doesn't have a strong commitment, doesn't have a strong commitment or belief in an area or in a system, but has interest in it. Okay, that's dilettante. It's very specific. You can go and research about it a, fit, a bit more. Then we have insolvent, a person who's gone bankrupt, has uh, no money to pay out of his debts. Then we have termagant. Termagant uh, is, I think, usually used for women who are bad tempered. Okay, termagant women. All right.
Okay, next up we have fear of fire, phasmophobia, pyrophobia, claustrophobia, or thanatophobia. So fear of fire is called as pyrophobia. Okay, then the others we have uh, uh, phasmophobia. Phasmophobia is uh, the fear of ghosts, which I'm pretty sure everyone has. The ghost phobia, the one you, the one you get while watching movies, after watching movies, when you go back to sleep. Then we have claustrophobia. Claustro, claustrophobia is the fear of enclosed spaces, pretty common. That people uh, get this fear from uh, going into lifts, etc. Enclosed spaces. That's claustrophobia. Then uh, thanatophobia is actually. Um, this is uh, this fear of death. Okay, the fear from uh, death and fear of uh, dying. Okay, sort of death, uh, death uh, fear, death uh, anxiety. All right, thanatophobia. All right. So with this, we finish off our questions on one word substitution. We hope you have understood how these questions are going to come and how you have to solve them. All right. So that's all for our class on one word substitution. I hope you have understood the basic uh, criteria, uh, basic uh, you know, basic premise of who one word substitution really is about. Uh, the various examples that we discussed, if any of them were new to you, make sure you note them down for your revision later. All right, Th this is going to you know add on to your vocabulary. Uh, so keep learning and keep revising. I will see you the next time. Thank you for watching.